the students. This is all E. And we are in the second module of Windows System Security Hardening. And in this module we are exploring the application hardening, with thousands of new malicious files created every day. Using traditional methods like antivirus solutions signature-based detection to fight against malware provides an inadequate defense against new attacks. In most organizations, information is the most valuable asset. Ensuring that only approved users have access to that information is imperative. When the user runs a process, that process has the same level of access to data that the user has. As a result, sensitive information could easily be deleted or transmitted out of the organization if a user knowingly or unknowingly runs malicious software. You see and see applications software can represent a pretty large attack surface. This is especially true when it comes to a large fleet of systems used throughout an organization. So it's important to have some kind of application policies in place. These policies serve two purposes. Not only do they define boundaries of what applications are permitted or not, but they also help educate folks on how to use software more securely. We've seen the risks that software can pose because of security vulnerabilities. It makes sense to have a policy around applying software updates in a timely way. A common recommendation or even a requirement is to only support or require the latest version of a piece of software. From the IT support perspective this is important. Because software updates would often fix issues that someone may be encountering. But from the security side of things. Making sure the latest version of the software will ensure that all security patches have been applied and the most secure version is in use. This should be clearly called out in a policy. People tend to be pretty lazy about applying updates to software that they use a lot lots of times applying an update requires restarting the application. Which can feel inconvenient and disruptive to users. It's generally a good idea to disallow risky classes of software by policy. Things like file sharing software and piracy related software tend to be closely associated with malware infection. Since a lot of workflows live exclusively within the web browser now they represent a potential vector for malware that often gets overlooked. Extensions that require full access to websites visited can be risky since the extension developer has the power to modify pages visited. Some extensions may even send user input to a remote server. This could potentially leak confidential information.